Colorado does have a special place in history uh, in terms of women's right to vote. This house was built by William Byers, uh, who started the Rocky Mountain News, the first newspaper here in Denver. Uh, newspapers were, were definitely um, important in uh, getting women the right to vote. This front room um, shows 1883, so the Victorian era, about 10 years before women in Colorado got the right to vote. The Evans, the second family, lived here for 92 years. Um, and the, the daughters, um, who grew up in this house spent most of their lives here and made sure that the house was preserved um, to become a museum. So almost everything in the home actually belonged to them as well. So those are the people that donated the house. Margaret Evans was born here in 1889. And Margaret Evans was involved in the women's clubs. So in the 1880s, those were becoming more and more popular throughout the country. And they started sort of, um, I've heard them described as like college for middle-aged women. They would teach each other about um, you know, arts and literature, history, um, but then they took up social causes. Um, and that's part of what laid the groundwork for the suffrage movement and the temperance movement um, because these organizations were uh, working together and they were networked from one city to the next um, and able to work together for these bigger causes. Women in Colorado got the right to vote in 1893, which was more than a quarter century before the 19th Amendment, which gave um, most women nationwide the right to vote. The interesting thing about Colorado, it's the first state where we got the vote by popular referendum, which means rather than just lawmakers putting it into place, like Wyoming, um, where it was part of the Constitution, it's the first state where it was put to the voters. And that was the first time that the, the all-male voters made that decision. And so that was really significant. It was a grassroots effort. And so that's sort of the distinction that Colorado has. And so then it became um, like a model for the rest of the country. People were asking about how the success was and what the techniques people used um, to do comparisons. So after uh, women got the right to vote in 1893, the very next year women were elected to the state legislature. That was the first time uh, women were elected to those positions. As we were approaching uh, the 19th Amendment passing, one of the big game changers was that um, women started protesting at the White House. Um, and that was one of the first times that um, people were um, a taking these techniques for protesting. With Alice Paul and uh, the Women's Party, you were seeing a whole new type of activism happening. Um, women were arrested and there was um, hunger strikes and things like that. And a lot of the um, protests were directed towards Woodrow Wilson. Um, women even used his own words um, on their posters. They were um, you know, fighting for democracy around the world in World War I, yet women at, in America could not vote. The ballot box is from 1884, so it's one that was used uh, for the election in 1893. Um, and this is a ballot from 1893 uh, when the voters were able to approve or not approve women's suffrage in Colorado. I think it's a really important anniversary to take a look at and uh, recognize all the complexities of it, all the issues that went into the fight, and that um, it wasn't one that was um, easily won, and it wasn't over in 1920. Um, this just removed one barrier to the vote, and that there were others that continued on beyond this point. So, um, you know, not all women had the right to vote in, in 1920, and it's important to recognize um, that the vote is precious and that there are still um, ongoing barriers and things like that to, to examine, um, and that uh, the vote is worth uh, exercising and fighting for today.